Well, some people still swear by i5s for mid-range gaming builds. There's no doubt that the i5 moniker, the i5 type of products from Intel is a shadow of its former self. You see, a long time ago, i5s didn't just used to be an okay mid-range option for some people to select depending on the price. They used to be the gold standard for enthusiast gaming when Intel actually gave you not barely enough or even less than enough sometimes, but a little more than enough threads necessary to get really high frame rates, no matter what graphics card you had. You see, once i5s were given four cores, they kind of became the de facto gaming standard in the $200 to $300 price range. And this for sure continued with the 2500K, the 3570K, and so on and so forth. Well, until Zen came out and things started to get a little dicey. Honestly, even before Zen, there were games like Battlefield 4 that in multiplayer showed four cores wasn't really cutting it anymore. And yeah, Intel slowly increased cores to six, but no hyper-threading. It just sometimes fell flat in some games. And even to this day, now that they finally give you 12 threads, it still just doesn't feel like a gaming standard. Not when you can get a far more efficient and stronger 5600X that is always in stock now. But I'm sure you can guess from the title and thumbnail of this video, that might be about to change. I think people have been transfixing on the i9 and i7s of Alder Lake a little too much recently, which, yeah, I can confirm indeed 100% that right now Intel plans to call the top one the i9-12900K, and there will be an i7-12700K, and of course an i5-12600K, as you saw in the thumbnail for this video, and those top i9s and i7s will be very fast and very power hungry, but I think that they're overshadowing what the real winner of this lineup will be. And it's a winner that used to be the winner of all of Intel's new lineups. But let me take a step back for a minute here and just recap where I'm coming from. Almost three months ago, I leaked the connection between Alder Lake launching this holiday season and Windows 11 also launching this holiday season with massive scheduling updates for what I called two years ago could be Intel's next Sandy Bridge, Alder Lake. And in the same week of that tweet, I leaked not just Raptor Lake, but everything exclusively first about the segmentation, you know, the 6 plus 4 and the i5K, when the K-series would be coming, you know, first to desktop, then they're rolling out the rest of the lineup. And the past few months has just been watching other people slowly say things that were in that video basically over a few months until right now, late August, where we are in what I would call the frenzied state of leaks before a new gaming hardware product launch. You know, just one or two months out, this is when everyone starts going crazy, either doubting or with enthusiasm about the new product, as little whispers and leaks come out constantly. This is when everyone places their final bets, and everyone starts to not just hypothesize what the product's going to be, but now that we know almost everything, how exactly it's going to stack up against the competition. Last year, at this point in the year, everyone was placing their bets on whether or not top RDNA 2 would beat the 3080, or according to some people, just the 3070. And actually, I was going to do an Intel Arc video this week before I got one of those little frenzied tidbits that you tend to get right before a new product launches. And at first, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. But over time, I really started to think on it. And I realized, no, this is due for its own video and its own video to come out first. And as I've already said in this video, it's the final confirmation of the naming of the i9, i7, i5. And of course, the fact that the top i5, the case SKUs, would be six big cores and four little cores. And again, that's not technically new information, but having my own personal sources, multiple of them, reconfirm it again, locking in exactly what the top i5 will be and what the top i5 will be called kind of allows you to start really wargaming out 
how it will stack up specifically against AMD. You know, this is when you can start going, not just is Alder Lake going to compete, which I think we've known for a while now it will compete at least okay with Zen 3. This is when you can start going, will this specific product in the lineup be a successful product that everyone's going to want to get their hands on. And so in addition to confirming the 6 plus 4 in the name of the i5 again, I dug into its pricing and its performance exactly. And I'm not sure enough people have realized how competitive this product may be. And I don't just want to spit out insider performance numbers here. I want to make it explicitly clear how this should obviously be a killer product people are sleeping on, right? So let's start by comparing the 11600K to the 5600X. Now, this is Rocket Lake, and we've known for a couple years that Alder Lake is going to have Golden Cove, which should be around 20% better than that, right? We're comparing it, you know, back then to Tiger Lake, so it, it could be a little more or less, but it, it's gonna be about 20% better in IPC, or at least in single-threaded performance. So if we add 20% to the 11600K score here, well, yeah, we get to something that blows the 5600X away. Okay, but take it a step further, right? Now let's compare it to the 5800X that retails for $450. Add 20%, it's not that far away than the 5800X, even in multi-threading, and that's before you consider the little cores, right? If four Gracemont cores in Alder Lake is anything like the four Tremont cores in Lakefield, yeah, it t should take up about the same amount of die space for a quad core little cluster to one big core. That's kind of the entire point, that you can fit four little cores in the same die space as one big core. It's not just about mobile efficiency. It's about bringing you more multi-threaded performance in the same die space. But let's just be extra conservative with the math here, right? Let's assume that for some bizarre reason, these four little cores have the same multi-threaded performance as one big core. If we even just assume that and take this math here and just say it's basically the equivalent of seven big cores instead of six because of those little cores, it still narrowly beats the 5800X in multi-threading. And again, we should expect four Gracemont cores to outperform a big core in multi-threading. That's the entire point. That's why it's not launching until Windows 11 is out with its better scheduling. In fact, I am told, by the way, just to be clear, that Gracemont is stronger than people are expecting. And that if you really think about it, well... I'm not going to divulge exactly where I think the performance could be, but it could exceed Skylake IPC. And honestly, let's think about what we do know. I at least know that Raptor Lake isn't even increasing the amount of big cores. It's doubling the little cores, gen over gen. If Intel's doing that, it's probably because they think the little core architecture is possibly a bigger deal than Golden Cove. And it's not going to stop there with Raptor Lake. As I keep emphasizing, there are other architectures coming from Intel over the next few years that way more weight the architecture towards the little cores. I'm not talking about Arrow Lake either. I'm talking about something much bigger. And I'm not going to say a lot about that. I'm just saying we know that Intel's betting on the little cores at least as much as its big cores over the next few years. That's Gonna only be if they think you'll perform well, guys. But speaking of conservative math, heck, if you just assumed Gracemont's quad-core cluster in the i5 was as strong as not like a Skylake i5, but a Sandy Bridge one, and add that to a 20% stronger 11600K, it matches or beats the 5800X. So, yeah, it seems pretty clear to me, or it should be hopefully clear to all of you, that this might not just be a 5600X killer, it might be a 5800X killer. And at this point, I'm sure a lot of people will bring up that bench of the 12700 that came out recently. And this is something that needs to be emphasized is not the K model. It's boosting notably lower than both the i7K and the i5K. And we can't really confirm the test system of that one. I mean, in fact, I looked into Geekbench V5, which I don't use this benchmark for any type of 
of indication of real world performance. I would use real world tests, not just swear by Geekbench. But when I looked into the score, it got a single threaded score that's the same as a Rocket Lake i5. Yeah, this thing's boosting way lower than what the Alder Lake i5K model will be boosting. I think you should take this away as probably beam around the performance of a Alder Lake i5K model, but only in multi-threading. In single threading, the i5 is going to boost higher, but that's because it uses more energy. The non-K models are 65 watts. And so even then, even with this low boosting engineering sample, it matches the 5800X. And finally, I'm actually not that worried about the power usage of at least the Alder Lake i5. You see, I know the Rocket Lake i9 is an insane space heater, but the Rocket Lake i5 is acceptable power usage, around 5800X. And based on what I can gather from my sources, yes, top Alder Lake's gonna use a lot of energy, more than AMD, but they don't expect the overall lineup to use really more energy than Rocket Lake. It should use roughly the same with many of the segments actually using a bit less on average in daily usage. So basically what I'm saying is at this point, hopefully you'll agree by what I've laid out that Look, guys, the i5-12600K with six big cores and four little cores, 10 cores total, although they're different core architectures, should bring next-gen gaming performance above what Zen 3 has while bringing 5800X multi-threading performance, roughly, and 5800X power consumption. And it's probably going to cost a lot less, too, which gets us into the next part of this video. You know, once I came to the conclusion that this thing was more of a 5800X competitor than a 5600X competitor, I wanted to know what the pricing would be. And it was consistent with all of my sources that this is simply slotting in in the same segment that the old 11600K occupied. This is not going to a higher tier. So at the very least, no one should expect this to cost a lot more than what you would typically expect an i5 to cost, which has really been around the same $270 for years now. In fact, I would say that I would be surprised if it cost more than 350 or really more than $300. There's no evidence Intel has any plans to do that. And my sources believe that it might even just cost the same as a Rocket Lake i5. And that in fact, there will note be a KF model that costs even less, which yes, it loses the integrated graphics. 5600X doesn't have any. Now, I won't place bets on what the top i9 will cost, because if it does meet or beat the 5950X at multi-threading, then frankly, if I was Intel, I would charge at least 600. I mean, they can. Like, why not? But I think it's pretty clear that you shouldn't expect as much of a hike with the i7 if there is an i9 price hike. And the i5 shouldn't cost much more. If I was Intel, I'd price it at 299 And in fact, when I say that, my sources think that's a little too high. So yeah, this is very exciting. And I guess the final thing I will say is this. There's actually a few reasons Intel may want to price the i5. What I think most people will see as aggressively. Now, the first reason is that everything I've been talking about is with DDR4. Five. I expect a 5 to 15% performance hit with DDR4, and I know that that's a big range, but it's really going to depend on the app. Gaming doesn't seem like it's a huge deal, but yeah. So even if you remove 10%, though, still crushes the 5600X, but a lot of people won't want to buy expensive DDR5 or their expensive motherboards, or the cooler that will assuredly not come with the i5. So that's another thing to think about, the higher platform costs, possibly higher DDR5 costs, and the fact that you need to buy your own cooler. So in fact, it actually makes a ton of sense why Intel would price this at $300 or less, even if it might end up competing with the 5800X. Once you add the price of the DDR5, the motherboard and the cooler, it is kind of priced next to the 5800X if you think about it. But it should beat it and bring next-gen gaming frame rates. And of course, the final kicker is that not just everything have I been talking about is with DDR5 in mind, 
It's also with Windows 11 in mind, which I've had it suggested to me just so everyone knows that it may perform better with scheduling in Windows 10 than most people expect. Like it shouldn't be a complete basket case, but you're going to want to use Windows 11 with Alder Lake. And Intel knows that some people will be hesitant to move to a new operating system where they might have to deal with not just installing it on a new system and moving their files back around, but possibly new bugs to deal with because it's new. Uh, right now, I'm told it actually isn't very buggy and that it's actually more stable than Windows 10 in testing. But at the same time, Intel's going to keep that in mind as well, that they know they're asking people to update to a new operating system to get the best out of their new processors. And so they can't just charge a ton more. People will look for excuses to not upgrade if that's the case. Although let me also say that those who are hesitant to upgrade, I'm told Microsoft's going to push you really hard to do so as quickly as possible. They don't want people using Windows 10 for as long as people even used Windows 7 or Windows 8 when 10 came out. But anyways, even with these downsides, let's start wrapping this up. I think that even if you need to get a more expensive motherboard, which you might not need to a DDR4 motherboards that will likely lose some performance, but not enough to lose the 5600X, even if you did have to get a DDR5 motherboard and a DDR5 modules and upgrade to Windows 11, I think this new i5 could be a return to form for the i5 branding and a product that brings you next-gen gaming performance, good multi-threading performance that competes with more expensive AMD processors, and power usage that isn't insane because it's not the top SKU. I think that the i5-12600K could be about to become the gold standard for gamers, and really all gamers, with six big cores being enough for gaming, four little cores to accelerate games that need a bit more multi-threading and handle background streaming. I think the i5 is going to be the killer product in the Alder Lake lineup. And yeah, I know there's a 5600 XT or 5800 XT coming with Vcash, and that could make for great competition against this product, but I'm not even sure a 5600X with Vcash would necessarily beat this i5. It'd probably still be pretty close, although likely more efficient. And that's not coming till quarter one. This fall belongs to Intel when it comes to enthusiast processors. And, well, I can say I was expecting this two years ago, but I'm really excited to see it come to fruition today, two years later. Oh, and one more thing. I do want to pull up one part of that GPU Arc video that I delayed, and that's a little update on the RTX 3060 flood report I put out recently. You know, the one where I said there actually would be a lot of 6600 XTs at launch, and there were, and the one where I said there would be a ton of RTX 3060s shipped in August, and... Yeah, there were. They showed up around the 6600 XT launch, and in fact, while recording this video, I checked, and there's some 3060s actually in stock for around 500 bucks on Newegg right now. Although I do expect these to sell out quickly. Again, like I said they would in that flood video, I said the demand is far exceeding what the supply will be for months still to come. Now, yeah, that's not an MSRP, but also, I said in that video, the 3060 will never be at MSRP due to rising GDR6 costs. It has more GDR6, a bigger die, and more expensive cooling requirements than the 6600 XT. Although its MSRP is lower, the 3060's MSRP is fake. And it's in stock again when I said it would, but at the prices I said it would be at, which is higher than the 6600 XT. Although I do have an adjustment to make. It does seem like a large portion of the North American 3060s have actually been shipped to system integrators, which is because NVIDIA is starting to get pretty worried about how mad system integrators are getting with NVIDIA right now. You see, NVIDIA may have caught notice that the 6600 XT is actually manufacturable with a decent profit at $380. And as I confirmed in that video, 
System integrators, if they can get a hold of 6600 XTs in mass for MSRP, they don't even want to carry the 3060 or possibly even the 3060 Ti anymore. They'll just buy 6600 XTs for their pre-builds. And this is something that's worrying NVIDIA. And so, yeah, they're shipping a lot of these actually to system integrators, it turns out. And also, they're realizing they need to win them over before Intel Arc launches because you can bet Intel is going to take note of how NVIDIA has just ignored the low end in the mid range this generation and really snuffed system integrators in favor of supplying mining firms directly. And Intel's going to want to bundle i9s and i7s with their ARC graphics cards. And NVIDIA apparently is getting really worried about being pushed out of some of these markets by the fact that not only can AMD bundle their products together, but now so can Intel. And Intel's Really good at being, let's say, aggressive at doing that against the competition. So just a little update for that 3060 flood report that I thought you guys might want to know. And a little teaser, let's say, for what I'm about to cover with Intel Arc and what to expect from that. But that will be another video. That's going to do it for this one. And I hope you did enjoy it. Remember, to, if you don't want to miss the upcoming reports and videos and podcasts, do subscribe to the Moore's Laws Dead YouTube channel. Ring the bell button so you see those videos coming out. Subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app and give us a review. It really does help. And of course, if you have the extra money, consider supporting us. You know, me, Gerard Dan, the entire Moore's Laws Dead team on Patreon, where you'll get access to exclusive ad-free versions of Broken Silicon exclusive podcasts every week. Another one coming out this week, in fact, and the ability to ask me and guests that come on the show questions. Then, as always, to everyone, thank you for watching. <laughs>